I'm Nick Ferran. I'm a consultant trauma and orthopedic surgeon specializing in shoulder and elbow surgery. I'm passionate about delivering awake shoulder and elbow surgery under regional anesthesia where appropriate and have interests in treating conditions such as frozen shoulder, rotator cuff tears, fractures and dislocations around the clavicle, shoulder and elbow, and nerve problems such as cubital tunnel syndrome and carpal tunnel syndrome. If you have any of these problems or want a consultation about your shoulder or elbow, please get in touch with our practice management team. So wake shoulder and elbow surgery is surgery provided to the upper limb under regional anesthesia with or without sedation. This avoids the need for a general anesthetic and uh, this is something that I discuss with my patients in clinic as an option for their surgery. Most of the procedures we do under awake anesthesia are keyhole uh, operations on the shoulder or elbow, but some open operations can be done as well. We discuss whether awake shoulder surgery is right for the patient before uh, making a decision about, about the operation. And on the day, my anesthetist will talk to them about the anesthetic itself. Uh, we have to work as a team to make sure our patients are confident, comfortable uh, throughout the procedure. And we both have to be experts in delivering this surgery and work well together. Uh, Ronnie, can you explain what the anesthetic process is when a patient comes in for awake surgery? Absolutely. So um, the process is fairly, uh, it's, it's a good, we have a good routine. So the patient will come in in the morning in his room and then I will go and, and speak to my patient and tell him, uh, first I'll ask him a question about his health. So that's what we call anesthetic pre-assessment. And then I'll explain all the steps. So literally every single step. So the patient will need a drip on his hand. And then I will give him a what's called a nerve block. So it's a little painkiller injection. Um, if it's for shoulder if shoulder surgery, it, it will be in the neck. And if it's elbow surgery, it will be just above the clavicle. Um, it's, it's fairly comfortable procedure. It lasts about, it takes about five to 10 minutes to do. And then uh, once I'm 100% that the uh, upper limb is nice and numb, then um, we proceed to the operation. In certain cases um, that I discuss with Nick Fraun, um, we have to combine uh, a nerve block with a general anesthetic if we feel that's appropriate or uh, in, in different situations. But most patients um, would rather have it awake. And I think a good, a good proof that it really works is most of the patients we have come from one side, they come back from the other side and they want to have it done awake because they're really comfortable, no pain, went home the same day. Some of our patients, you go out for dinner and restaurant the same day in the evening. How amazing is that? Uh, so, so yeah, I think we, we strongly believe in awake surgery for, for shoulder and elbow. I think there are multiple benefits for patients having awake shoulder and elbow surgery. The obvious key benefit is avoiding the risks of a general anesthetic. And although the risks of a general anesthetic might be rare, uh, some risks such as nausea and vomiting after surgery are quite common and well known amongst patients and cause a concern for patients. With awake shoulder and elbow surgery, there's no uh, nausea and vomiting after surgery. And patients can often eat straight away. From a surgical point of view, I quite enjoy if the patient's having a keyhole operation, being able to explain them what we find during their operation and giving them a better understanding of what is done inside their shoulder. This helps them after surgery to be confident with their rehabilitation and means that our consultations after surgery tend to be focusing on rehab and how to get better and get back to a normal level of activity, rather than still having to focus on what was found or what was done during surgery several weeks ago. Also, patients leave hospital quicker because they don't have to recover from the drowsy effects of a general anesthetic, and they can also get back to activity quicker. Uh, and 
I think that all these benefits are why I tend to offer this to my patients uh, as an option for their surgery. Ronnie, what do you think? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, there's a, I think for me, there's a few, there's a few key points. Um, what Nick said about patient being able to get on with it with their own life, you know, it's we all have very busy life, and a general anesthetic uh, can cause a phenomenon cause fatigue, where you can be exhausted for days, sometimes week, not really understanding why, and even if everything was done, you know. By the by, the book you can still have that tiredness, uh, which you obviously don't get with awake surgery because only your arm is numb, and uh, so I won't be doing anything to your brain or your heart or your lungs. So it's it's really safe. Um, the other thing that I'm really keen on is um, a really good pain control. So obviously the pain for the operation and after the operation, but. Um, but also, uh, there's, a, there's another phenomenon called chronic pain, uh, which means that having really um, strong, heavy pain that can last a few days, sometimes a few, few weeks or more. Uh, and the best way to prevent that is regional anesthesia, so that injection of painkiller um, before the operation. And, and as Nick Ferrand said, um, avoiding the risk of general anesthetic is, is great. So that means that we can offer this operation that will improve patient's quality of life. Now, you know, all of a sudden you'll be able to reach these things in the top cupboard. And even though, even if your health is not 100%, because we can offer this technique where you're awake, then it's still really safe and you can still, you know, get on with your life and, uh, and, and do whatever you want to do, really. I agree. I think awake uh, shoulder surgery under regional anesthesia allows us to offer surgery sometimes to patients who aren't fit enough for a general anesthetic. Um, and sometimes this is their only option to be able to get that improvement in quality of life from surgery without avoiding the severe risks that a general anesthetic might pose because of the conditions that they already have. I always say that awake shoulder and elbow surgery is not right for every pre procedure, every patient, or every surgeon. Not all procedures can be done under regional anesthesia. Some procedures require muscle relaxation, which can only be done with a patient under general anesthetic, as that general muscle relaxation will stop the muscles from breathing. There are some upper limb operations such as operations on the clavicle that will not be covered effectively by regional anesthesia and for some very long operations such as significant major trauma operations having a patient awake under regional anesthesia may be difficult for the patient so in those cases I wouldn't always recommend regional anesthesia unless the patient's unfit for a general anesthetic also, from a surgical point of view, delivering surgery safely and effectively under regional anesthesia does take some special surgical skills. And so not every surgeon may want to offer this as a service. But I've trained uh, with colleagues around the UK uh, to deliver this uh, surgery safely for patients. And then finally, some patients have severe concerns about being awake during surgery, may be severely anxious, and while we can control anxiety with sedation, some patients will just not want to know what's going on during their operation. So we have this discussion in clinic, and we work out whether the procedure is right for them, and, sorry, whether the procedure is right for awake uh, shoulder surgery, and whether awake shoulder surgery is right for them. What do you think, Ronnie? I think I think that's a fair point. And having you know, awake surgery is right for some patients, some surgery, and some surgeon. I think that's that's absolutely right. Um, what what I would say is, from a purely medical point of view, awake surgery is possible for ninety nine percent of patients. There's a few neurological conditions that will. Be a contraindication to that technique. Um, 
but most patients um, will, will, will be able to benefit from it. Um, one thing that patients are really concerned is, and that makes them really anxious is actually believing that it's going to work. <laughs> so well, what I see very often is we, I offer them that procedure, we've agreed that this is the right thing to do for that operation, and then we, I do that injection of painkiller, and then they realize their arm is really heavy and numb and they can't feel anything. So then, then all of a sudden they don't want that sedation, general anesthetic, because they feel like they, you know, they think, oh wow, okay, it's working. Like, why would I take the risk? Why would I be knocked off for you know, a few hours and then be drowsy the whole day and then feeling sick? So it happened quite often where actually uh, we, we get away by doing it that way and we have you know, Nick's very nice pop music playlist playing in the background and uh, we're talking to each other and I get to know my patient as well so it's quite, it's quite fun. Some patients they're overly anxious and we uh, can offer sedation. So sedation has to be seen, it's a bit like taking a sleeping tablet. You know, you, we, I'll still be able to wake them up because they will be like literally snoring, they won't remember anything, won't see anything. Uh, and, and then they wake up it's like, oh, so when's my operation? Oh, is it done yet? Okay, okay, cool. So, so it works. Uh, and then as Nick said, some patients, it's just not possible, that's fine. We'll do the painkiller injection just so that my patient will be very comfortable uh, after the operation, general anesthetic, and done. So, what do you think? I, th I totally agree. They also, previously, we were unable to offer awake shoulder surgery to patients who didn't speak English because we wouldn't be able to communicate with them uh, through out the operation and keep them c calm and comfortable. But Ronnie and I have actually worked together with a team at our hospital and developed an app that will allow us to communicate with patients in eight languages during their awake surgery. So that allows us to offer this to more patients um, who may need surgery on their shoulders and elbows.